a brand new $10 condenser microphone. I unbox it and check it out. Coming up. In an upcoming video, I'm going to check out a lot of microphones that I have in my microphone collection, including this Octava, my M Audio producer, Shure SM58s, Shure SM57s, and other highball microphones, other condenser microphones. But I decided to add one more microphone to my collection. This is a BM100 FX studio microphone it says it's professional large diaphragm. Uh, I'm going to unbox this, take a look at it, see what we got here. Uh, it was $10 or $9.99 shipped UPS from California. So there was some shipping cost involved there. Pretty good deal, maybe too good to be true. Let's uh, dig in here, see what we got, and test this thing out. Okay, so here's the box. It is a professional large diaphragm studio recording microphone, studio microphone. New series. All right, I don't see any kind of brand on it. Open from here. We got instructions. Capacitor microphone schematic diagram. A toughened weighing towel. A reverberation adjusting knob. A, it says a volume knob. And, th and the metal body. <laughs> the print is backwards on the volume echo. And the rest of it. Installing the world's first integrated professional recording microphones reverberation effect. The condenser mic originated with our company for the computer recording network K Song and carefully designed professional product. It proved to be a kind of new technology revolution in the industry leading to a new way of K-Song, opened a new era of network K-Song. All right, here's the parameters. It's capacitive, 30 through 20,000 hertz. Directivity heart-shaped, also called cardioid. Max 120 dB, signal and noise ratio 70. We got a windscreen. We got a clip. Although I'm not sure. I guess it I guess that'll work. We got a cable. And it's a different kind of cable than I've seen before. XLR, mini jack, and USB. And here's the microphone. With the echo knob and the volume knob. And they appear to be backwards from normal. Looks like the echo down all the way, up all the way, volume down all the way, up all the way. It's a BM, it's a BM 100 FX, and it does have an XLR connector. Also has a little tripod stand that I guess works with this clip I 
Yep. Nothing hiding under the foam. Despite the fact that it has an XLR connector, I'm concerned about running full phantom power into this as it's designed to run off of a USB cord with 5 volts and phantom power is 48 volts. I'm worried I might blow up the electronics inside here. My M-Audio producer USB sends both audio and power through the USB plug. On this microphone, the USB is used for power only, not for audio information. For that, it uses this tip ring sleeve mini plug. Now the tip ring sleeve is not balanced. It simply sends the audio data into two channels, left and right. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be powering from my Anchor external battery and plugging the mini plug into my Behringer mixer. I'm running line out for my Behringer mixer into my camcorder. Right now you're hearing me through the lavalier clip to my shirt, but I'm about to turn that down. And now you're hearing me through the BM100FX microphone. Now, a volume control on a microphone is not a desirable feature on professional mics because you want to control mic level through your mixing board not through the microphone and I can get this thing too loud so that it oversaturates the signal so I'm gonna back it off a little bit and boost the gain on the mixer and it sounds a little better when I boost the gain on the mixer compared to boosting the gain on the microphone most folks like their effects outboard, but this does have the, the built-in built in echo, echo, which, which is, is kind of fun. fun. It, it might, might be, be fun, fun for karaoke, karaoke or, something or something like, like that. that. But I prefer to use an outboard effects processor to something that's kind of slap back sounding uh, that's built into this microphone. It's not meant to be hand handheld, but here's how it sounds a few, uh, I guess about six inches from my mouth. And here it is a little closer. And here it is further out. Let's check off axis rejection. So now I'm speaking into the side of the microphone. And now I'm speaking into the back of the microphone. So it, it, it definitely has a cardioid pickup pattern. Really, this isn't that bad for what I paid for it for $10. It does, I do hear a slight bed of hiss, so it's not as quiet as some microphones. You might have heard my refrigerator kick on just now. So it does pick up some ambient noise even with the cardioid pickup pattern. The echo feature is fun, but not something I would use regularly. Uh, the volume control, is something I don't really like. I prefer to, to control volume through some other source. And I don't really like the fact that it uses a stereo mini plug. I would much rather plug it in directly with an XLR. I am scared to try to use phantom power through this XLR. Uh, I feel like I might blow up the electronics that do the echo and the volume built into this mic. Maybe it's a $10 mic. I might try it out anyway. Uh, blow it up just for the fun of it. But for now, I'm going to refrain from doing that. So, hey, you get what you pay for. It's pretty cool. It actually sounds pretty good for $10. And uh, it works better than the mic built into a laptop computer. So uh, for that purpose, it's probably worth it. If you enjoyed this video or any other in the Thrifty AV series, please like and subscribe. And thank you to my patrons for supporting Thrifty AV. Stay thrifty, everyone.